Can something with a bizarre moniker like monkey's head mushroom really help improve brain function, improve mood, help with gut health, and even help with nerve regeneration? Of course, I'm talking about my personal favorite mushroom of all time, the lion's mane mushroom. This mushroom is not only easy to grow, but it's also a delicious gourmet mushroom and a medicinal powerhouse. In this video, we're going to be focusing on lion's mane as a medicinal mushroom, talking about everything from the history to the medicinal benefits. There's a lot of information in this video, so I've broken it all down into chapters, which you can access by clicking the links in the description. Also, if you want a comprehensive guide and all of the links to all of the research and everything like that, make sure you check out the guide, which I've also linked to in the description of this video. The scientific name for lion's mane is Heresium arenaceus. Heresium in Latin literally means hedgehog, which kind of makes sense because this mushroom actually kind of does look like a spiny little hedgehog. Common names include bearded tooth, bearded hedgehog, or even pom-pom, but basically everybody calls it lion's mane because, well, it kind of looks like a lion's mane, so let's just stick with that. Lion's mane is not your traditional cap and stem mushroom. It has teeth instead of gills, which is where it releases its spores. Lion's mane is a saprophytic mushroom, which means it grows on dead organic matter. So if you're walking around in the woods, you might find it on fallen logs where it's growing right out of the side of the log. And lion's mane or relatives of lion's mane are actually pretty common to find. Even if you can't find true Heresium arenaceus growing in your area, you can likely find one of its cousins, such as Heresium coralloides or one similar. And that's quite often what I'll find walking around the woods in our area. Now to grow lion's mane, which is actually pretty easy to do, you basically just mimic this natural process. So lion's mane can be grown on synthetic logs, which is often how it's uh, cultivated commercially, or you can grow it on blocks of hardwood sawdust because lion's mane will use up that organic hardwood material and eventually fruit. Again, lion's mane, in my opinion, is one of the easiest mushrooms to grow. It's not picky at all in terms of conditions, and it will quite often produce monstrous bounties. So if you wanted to do it yourself, lion's mane is actually pretty easy to grow, which we will cover in another video, but if you want to just skip ahead, you can always find a easy to grow lion's mane kit online and just kind of grow it on your countertop. Lion's mane has been around for a long time and it's been used for a long time and its claim to fame over the centuries was its apparent ability to soothe the membranes of the digestive tract. So traditionally used to combat stomach ailments and digestive issues, Lion's mane was also considered just a tonic for overall health. Of course, lion's mane also has a long tradition of use for brain health, which is what it's most famous for today. Others point to lion's mane for bolstering nerve growth and repair, while also helping with memory and focus. So lion's mane contains a variety of functional compounds, but two main players stand out. These are aromatic heresinones and diterpenoid arenacines. These are kind of weird names and might be difficult to remember, but just remember that lion's mane's scientific name is Heresium arenaceus. So heresinones and arenacines, Heresium arenaceus, I guess Latin isn't that bad, is it? No other food contains this powerful duo, which is why lion's mane mushroom is so special. Aranacines can do something particularly unusual and amazing. They can cross the blood-brain barrier. Heracinones may also share this ability, but further studies need to be done. This stealthy superpower is what gives lion's mane mushroom its reputation as a brain booster. Of the various aranacines that have been identified, lion's mane fruiting body contains two, namely aranacine A and aranacine B. So why is this important? Well, it's important because both of these aranacines have been shown to promote the synthesis of nerve growth factor. Other aranacines might be found in the mushroom's mycelium, but aranacines don't operate alone. The dual action of aranacines and heresinones together is what most likely fuels this mushroom's brain boosting ability. Four of the 11 heresinones currently known to science also boost nerve growth factor, and all four can be found in the lion's main fruiting body. Nerve growth factor, otherwise known as NGF, functions exactly as the name would suggest. It maintains nerve cell growth and reproduction, maintains cellular health, and prevents cell death. Neurotrophic factors make it possible for the brain to heal and repair itself after injury, and maintain what is known as plasticity throughout life. In other words, nerve growth factor is one of the reasons why you can teach an old dog new tricks, or in this case, a human. Your brain never stops reacting to information, thought patterns, and outside stimuli. And NGF helps to strengthen or even create new and important pathways in the brain. But there's a weird catch. 
NGF by itself isn't able to cross the blood-brain barrier. Now, this isn't a problem in healthy individuals whose brains make enough NGF. When the brain begins to age, however, NGF and other neurotrophic factors decline. That's where lion's mane comes in. Extracts from the mushroom have the potential to enhance the growth of neurites. These projections grow out of the nerve cells and become either axons or dendrites. These are the parts of the neurons that allow the cells to communicate with each other. More neurite growth means better communication and better overall brain function. There have actually been studies done on lion's mane for cognition with some pretty interesting results. In one double-blind placebo-controlled study, 30 adults with mild cognitive impairment were split into two different groups. One group was given four 250 milligram tablets of lion's mane three times per day, while the other group was given a placebo. It found those supplementing with lion's mane actually performed better on cognitive tests at weeks 8, 12, and 16 of the study. In a 2019 study, participants were given cookies, including lion's mane mushroom, for a period of 12 weeks. The results showed an improvement in cognitive function and prevention of short-term memory deterioration. Now, outside of clinical studies, there are people all over the world that report amazing results from adding this mushroom to their life. Considering what compounds are inside of this mushroom and what these compounds do, it makes total sense that people would experience these effects. As mentioned earlier, lion's mane is both a delicious gourmet edible and a powerful medicinal mushroom. If you can find it at your farmer's market or even better, grow it yourself, you are gonna be a happy camper. Now I'm not a cook, so Tegan usually does this for me, but when cooked, it is delicious. You can slice it up and fry it. It's got a really meaty texture. You can also add it to soups. It's just an absolutely delicious mushroom that you gotta try. But if you really wanna get the benefits of this mushroom, just eating the freshly harvested cooked mushroom might not be your best bet. That's because the beneficial compounds of the mushroom are actually locked up inside the tough cell walls of the mushroom fruiting body and need to be extracted in order to become bioavailable and for our bodies to be able to actually use and benefit from them. Now this is done through an extraction process which is either hot water extraction, alcohol extraction, or both. Dual extracted lion's mane is the best if you want to get all the benefits. This is done usually on an industrial scale by taking freshly harvested fruiting bodies, drying them, powdering them, and then performing an extraction like an alcohol extraction or a hot water extraction, and then drying them through either spray drying or by just drying in an oven. The end result is a fine powder that can just be sold as a bulk powder that can be encapsulated into capsules or can be added to all sorts of other food products. Now capsules are definitely the most convenient, but you can also find lion's mane in tincture form or in bulk powder form that you can easily add to coffee or smoothies or any other kind of recipe that you might be making. You can also find lots of products now that have lion's mane mushroom in them, like mushroom coffee or mushroom elixirs or even you know energy bars that have lion's mane. There's lots of different products that have lion's mane as an added functional ingredient. The most common dose of extracted lion's mane mushroom is somewhere between 500 milligrams and two grams. Now this dosage can vary greatly depending on what you're actually taking and what the mushroom supplement is actually made of, right? Because if it's made out of myceliated grain, there's gonna be a lot of starch in there, so the dosage needs to be higher. And if it's just powdered fruiting body that hasn't been extracted, the dosage would usually need to be a lot higher as well. But again, in general for properly extracted lion's mane mushroom fruiting body, it's somewhere between half a gram and two grams. So as long as there's an efficacious dose and the lion's mane is properly extracted and made from the right starting material, it shouldn't really matter what method you use or how you ingest it. Now, personally, I do find a lot of synergistic benefit with lion's mane and coffee together, so adding lion's mane to coffee. So it might be worth a try to add a scoop of lion's mane into your coffee instead of the traditional cream and sugar. So one of the most common questions we get is, can you take lion's mane before bed? And to be honest, I'm not really sure where this comes from because lion's mane in itself does not contain any caffeine and does not have any acute energizing effects, unless of course you're mixing it with coffee. People do use it for focus and concentration, which I guess you'd think would be more associated with daytime activities, but these effects are generally felt with consistent use over time. So yes, although it is more common to take lion's mane in the morning or in the afternoon, you can definitely take lion's mane as part of your nighttime routine. Lion's mane is a special mushroom and whether or not you just like to grow it, you like its culinary attributes, or if you like to use it as a brain booster, there's really no reason not to like this mushroom. 
If you've had experiences with this mushroom, I would love to hear about it. So please let me know in the comments below. Uh, other than that, that's it for this video. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.